Well, mediators know that there's something more important than the truth. What's more important than the truth? The story. The story is more important than the truth. And in this case, the story is about how the Mass Council on Family Mediation got formed back in about 1982 when Jerry Weinstein was running the Divorce Resource and Mediation Center, a group of us who were interested, and I'm looking at Julie Ginsburg, and I'm looking at Linda Robbins, and, and others got together and decided we should form a council. So we need to have a meeting. So we called Jerry Weinstein and we had a meeting at Jerry Weinstein's office to form a council. And the Academy of Family Mediators heard about this, and they sent us a consultant from New Jersey named Sam Margulies, who said, if you're going to form a council, I have one word of advice. Exclude no one. And then if you don't exclude anybody, you won't spend time arguing. So who was at this meeting? It was very crowded. There weren't enough seats. And Howie came and sat on the floor. And I don't think he could get a babysitter because he bought his daughter with him, who was about four months old. This was in about 1982. So now turn the clock forward about 30 years, and I'm training mediators with Julie Ginsburg and Judge Ginsburg and others at MCLE. And there's this guy, David Bilodeau, who's taking the training, and we're going around the room saying who we are, and David Bilodeau tells us who he is. And then he says, by the way, I'm Howard Goldstein's son-in-law. And that didn't really register me until I got home. And then I got home and said, holy smoke, is it possible? So I went back and asked him the next day. And sure enough, I met David Bilodeau's wife a long time before he did. And that's the story. He, David Bilodeau's wife was at the, she was three months old when she helped the Mass Council Incorporate. And that's my story. So what's next? Next is to talk about Howie. Howie is a student of mediation. He may deny that, but he's a student of mediation. So we're lucky to have David Hoffman here to present an award to Howie because David is a teacher of mediation. Thank you, David. Um, hi, Howie. Hey, David. So good to see you. Um, can't tell you how much love is being channeled your way in this Zoom room. Um, and uh, and from, from me as well. Um, I have loved you as a colleague and friend um, and someone, uh, the folks in the Zoom room don't know this, most, most of you would not know this, but Howie and I talked about becoming partners in our practices uh, some years ago. And that's, that's the highest compliment I can give someone is that I want to join forces with you and be in practice with you and share our fate together as professionals. And I think you can correct me if I'm misremembering this, Howie, you and I talked about this recently, but my recollection was there were two things that stood in the way of our doing that. One was that you were very rooted in Newton and in your office, and I was very rooted in Boston. And the other is that we'd be conflicted out of doing cases together. And that was, that was a big factor. Um, and uh, so uh, we got to be partners in a different way uh, because we collaborated together. So let me just pause there and see if I misstated anything. No, that's right, David. Um, and the truth is that we've, we've probably had 20 or 30 cases together over the years, and we wouldn't have had that happen if we had become law partners. Yeah. And I, I uh, mentioned recently, I looked in my database and I found 32 cases <laughs> that had your name on them. And I'm going to mention two of them because, you know, at, a, at an organization of mediators, 
Um, uh, and the same thing would happen if we were, if this was the collaborative law council uh, gathering. Um, uh, there's this impression that our cases are all, you know, kumbaya kinds of experiences. But I'm going to tell about two cases that were the opposite of kumbaya. And you and I were involved in both of them. And John Fisk was involved in one of them. So, John, I'm going to describe that case first, and I'm going to obviously leave out names and identifying information. But the case started out as a divorce case, and the case started out um, when it was a heterosexual marriage. Uh, they, they had both kind of professional sort of people, and they had two teenage kids. And the wife was having an affair that the husband didn't know about. And the, uh, the, it was discovered because the two teenage kids were using the mom's computer and found email messages between mom and the person she was having the affair with. And they were incensed. And when she, this was like after school and mom wasn't in the house. And when she drove up, they literally threw rocks at her car and she couldn't get out of the car. And she had to call the husband and say, we, there's trouble in paradise. <laughs> You know, uh, uh, you got to help out here. And, uh, you know, they, they figured it out how to keep peace uh, in the home, calm down the, the kids. But suffice it to say, that was a tough mediation. They went to John Fisk. Like, who else would they go to? They would go to John Fisk for their mediation. And John said they, they needed lawyers. And they uh, hired uh, Howie and me. And uh, so the, the, one of the lessons of that experience, uh, Howie, for me, um, uh, with John's help um, was that I knew in that case and in every one of the cases you and I have had together that I did that I was working with someone who was not an adversary but someone who was a true colleague and, and, and a friend and I never felt like I had to worry that he, you know I don't think either one of us felt like we had to worry that the other one was going to try to take advantage you know in some way and that we were both there to help the people who had entrusted us with their case. And um, uh, I have felt that with every single one of those cases. <laughs> and that's a, that's a gift um, uh, for us in, in this field. And the second case uh, was one uh, in which uh, how we, we were trying to make this a collaborative case. It was a bit of family business case. And we almost got there. We had the collaborative participation agreement all worked out. And the only thing the parties disagreed about was whether if they failed to reach a settlement, it was gonna to go to mediation or arbitration. Two, two siblings on one side of the table, my clients, one sibling on your side of the table. I'll, I'll just mention that they were brothers. That, that's about as much identifying information as I wanna share. And in the middle of this um, mediation, one of my clients got so angry at the older sibling that he started climbing across the conference room table because he wanted to take a swing at his brother. Um, and um, Howie and I managed to restrain them and keep every keep the peace. And, uh, uh, but um, I mentioned these two cases be because they are in some ways uncharacteristic of most of the cases we deal with, but they represent sort of the the tail of the bell curve. It's sort of the extreme version of the conflicts we deal with and how they can actually be physically dangerous. Many of them are emotionally you know, dangerous, uh, but uh, some of them can even be physically dangerous. And to have a rock solid relationship with a colleague uh, that I know that I can count on was uh, su is such an important factor in helping these family systems uh, reach a resolution and even heal. So um, I am extremely grateful to you, Howie, and, uh, and uh, join with everybody on the Zoom call in affirming what a well-deserved uh, award this is, uh, your many contributions to our field. You're really walking the talk of collaboration and, uh, and, and peacemaking and influencing people, I, I suspect influencing people in ways that you don't even know about. I'll give an example. I, uh, Howie, uh, you shared with me a, a bio 
uh, a short biography um, of your life, and, and I loved reading it. And um, I learned some things about you that I would have had no idea about. So uh, one of them uh, was that when you were at, uh, tell me if I'm getting any of this wrong, uh, when you were at Brandeis, you were the treasurer of the student council. And you made the decision as a college student that you were gonna redirect the funds that were on deposit in an ordinary bank and put them in a black owned bank. And uh, when I read that, I thought to myself, oh my God, that is such a wise thing to do. You were all of, you know, who knows, maybe uh, 20 years old at the time. And so you influenced me. And I, I uh, opened a, a, an account in a black owned bank right after reading that part of your, your bio. Uh, but you've also influenced us by the kind of person you are, um, uh, by the way that you've been candid about your cancer journey and helped us all destigmatize the, the, the way in which people talk about illness. Um, and that has uh, been uh, very meaningful. Um, so, so point number one, you're a great mediator, you're a great lawyer, you're a wonderful colleague, you have helped so many people and the ripple effects of that assistance that you have given to people has changed lives, including mine. So thank you for that. Well, now I have two other points, yeah, two other points that I want to make and then I'll shut up. <laughs> um, so point number two, uh, I thought it would be a really cool idea to involve everybody in the Zoom room in a uh, task that if I had been more organized, I would have figured this out you know, several days ago, but I wasn't organized enough to do it, which is to solicit from everybody in the Zoom room some adjectives. Now, if at the bottom of the screen, everybody can find the chat button and you can add to the chat button uh, a message uh, and it, it, uh, you can send it to everyone if you want, or it, but at least send it to me. Because at the end of today's program, what I want to do, I'll share my screen and show you what I have in mind. Uh, I want to create uh, what's called a Wordle. And a Wordle looks like this. You take a whole bunch of words and you put them together and they form a graphic image. So uh, Justin, with your permission, in the very last minute of our program today, uh, if you could just let me share my screen, I'll put up the Wordle of all the different adjectives that people in this Zoom room are gonna send me in a few minutes. Um, uh, let's, let's limit it to five. five. Your five top adjectives for, for Howie. Send them my way and I will put them in, into a Wordle. I'll tell you what my top uh, adjective. It's actually a noun, but I, uh, I, I think it also can work as an adjective. My, my top adjective uh, for you, Howie, is mensch. Um, this is a Yiddish term. Many of you are familiar with it. It's defined as a person of integrity and honor. Um, and I would add to that word list, it's, and it's just the, the start of one, that you are wise, funny, caring, creative, skilled, idealistic, realistic, brilliant, family focused, down to earth, insightful. And that just scratches the surface. So number one, you're a, a, a valued, accomplished, loved professional. Number two, you are a dear person whose personal qualities have influenced uh, all of us. And the final thing I want to say has to do with um, a conversation you and I had a few days ago about um, how our influence endures in the world. Uh, we talked about what does it mean to have a soul, spirit? Uh, what does it mean to have eternal life? Uh, in, in, in this world and the one beyond. And, and I shared with you something my rabbi often talks about, which is that each of us in our hearts um, 
uh, has a flame of, of love, loving energy. And we've talked about this in connection with the uh, uh, self-energy. We talk about this in, in internal family systems model. But in the different wisdom traditions, you know, it, Buddhism is called non-self. In Judaism, it's that which has no name. Uh, but whatever we call it in our various wisdom traditions, we all have it. And yours, your, and, and, and the flame inside each of us carries on in the flames that we light in other people's hearts. And uh, Howie, you will always live in my heart. In the hearts of people, not only in the Zoom room, but way beyond the Zoom room, people who have been deeply affected by your love, loving compassion, and your menschlichkeit, your the way in which you show up every day with such a great mind and a big heart, your true mensch. Congratulations on this honor. Well deserved. My friend, our friend. Thank you so much, David. Wow. You got the tears running on me too. Um, so, uh, Justin, is this my cue? <laughs> yep. Do you want me to share it in gallery view or you want to stay in the spotlight? Well, I, I'm looking at as much of the, the gallery as I can. So whatever, you're the stage manager. You can put me wherever you want. Um, I, I'm just overwhelmed. I, I, I made a big mistake today. I didn't bring tissues. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm already. Um, oh, <laughs> not, I can't have you wiping your sleeve <laughs> like that. That was my son and uh, Alex. So um, I actually gave some thought to what I wanted to say. And you know, we were talking for a few minutes before most people got here. And the first people, first person I want to mention is my wife, Mimi, who, um, as some of you know, uh, took a mediation training with John. And I remember we had talked about maybe she would use it in, in her work or, and I'm sure she did. Um, we had talked about maybe working together uh, in my office, and it, we never really could get it all together. But you know, the reason I wanted her to take the course was that I wanted her to spend time with John, and it was worth spending the money for that to happen. Um, was she the woman who loved snow cones? Uh, snow globes. Snow globes. Oh, that's right. I, there are snow my God, I forgot all about that. All over our house. You hear that? Yeah, name? I ran all over the town of Wellesley and I found a store with a snow globe and gave Mimi a snow globe. And you I put my picture all. in it or something. We still have it. So um, so thanks to Mimi. She's also was a, as some of you know, was a forensic um, social worker out of the district court clinic in Cambridge for more than 20 years. And at home, in addition to being my loving wife, she was also my in-house uh, consultant and some of these divorce cases, um, you know, I needed to get on the couch and she was there for me. And, you know, and she always encouraged me, you know, there's a way in which um, both of us um, uh, when we were thinking about our work lives, it always had to do with satisfaction. You know, we had some lean years and uh, those of you who've been in your own practice, you know that, that you can have good years and bad years, but you know, there was never a question that work had to be satisfying. It had to be meaningful. And, um, and, and she always encouraged me in that direction. Um, I want to say a little bit about John and David. You know, 
there, there's some, I think I, I might be the oldest person on this Zoom call, except for John. Um, what people, and he looks a lot younger than me, um, what people may not know is that when John started talking about mediation, he was subversive, it was subversive. I mean, we were all taught in law school that you had to be a zealous advocate. And the idea that we would encourage people, especially people getting divorced, to be nice to each other, to think about their <laughs> children, you know, that was a subversive idea. And, you know, for 20 years before I personally uh, took trainings and, um, you know, became more active as a mediator and a collaborative lawyer, I frequently went to John with my cases. John would get me involved in his cases and it was a joy to work with him. And, you know, I think if you've been involved in mediation in the last 10 or 20 or 30 years, you don't know how revolutionary it really was. Um, David um, was the trainer that I had at my first mediation training uh, when I did the 32 hours or whatever we're supposed to, to qualify as a mediator. And I have continued to learn from him all these years. And it has been a joy to have cases with him because I learned from him during those cases. I've been to his trainings. Um, the beautiful picture of me that uh, they posted on the website was actually taken at one of David's IFS trainings. We were at the Audubon Center, I think in South Natick. And um, that picture, that the joy that you see in that picture is the joy that I always felt when I was learning from David. Um, now I wanna talk a little bit about the work of mediation because for, and, and it took me a long time to get this. And I think in candor, it probably took getting sick. It took, um, you know, I, I, things have been a little tough for me medically for since really about 2017, but I, I never stopped working. Um, the work that we do in mediation and collaborative law, I've, I view it, it's spiritual work. It's holy work. It's soul nourishing. And for, for me, I just, I couldn't wait to get back to it. I would go to chemo and feel like hell for a week and you know, you couldn't keep me away. And I, I took a break, a long break for a while in uh, 2019 and then um, went to the uh, APFM meeting. I don't know how many of you remember that. And I had such a good time and I determined I was gonna get back into it. And after the first of the year, 2020, I started taking clients on again. And, you know, I, I've been to a lot of trainings and I often felt inadequate that people, people like David and John and others on this call, they, they seemed like they were masterful and they always would, you know, have these maneuvers or it seemed to me like they were maneuvers that got cases settled, but, you know, what I came to understand was that we do our best work as mediators if we come into the room with an open heart and that it's our individual intention that we bring into the room that helps people resolve their differences. And it, it's up to us. And, and so that's a good segue to the blog posts. Um, and that was something, I, thank you, Justin. Justin reached out to me about a week or two ago. This, this is ridiculous. I need about six tissues. Um, and uh, encouraged me to write something for the blog. And, and it just sort of spilled out sort of a stream of consciousness. And, um, you know, I have a good friend who's a nationally renowned poet and she read it and she said, it sounds like a love letter. And, <laughs> and she's right. That's what it was. Um, it, it's all about this community and these people who showed up today because we have something 
as mediators in, in our holy community that other people don't have. And, um, you know, I sure, take all the trainings you can, and especially from gifted mediators, but don't forget that it's that moment before you walk in the room, you take a deep breath and you realize that these people are trusting you with their lives. And, you know, whatever you believe in that runs the universe, hopefully, you know, we've all been there. All the people on this call who've done mediation know that there's a magic moment when you have a breakthrough. It doesn't happen in every case. And it just feels like divine intervention. And, you know, it, it, like I said, it took me a long time to really get in touch with that. And, um, and yes, th th that was a love letter. And this is my opportunity to say goodbye to everybody. And, you know, uh, David was talking about the Yiddish word mensch. Well, when, I, when I, I was thinking, when I say goodbye in the next moment, that in Hebrew, we don't say goodbye. We say drought which loosely translated means till I see you again. And that's how I, would, how I would like to take my leave. I'm just so grateful that this happened. And uh, really, <laughs> I gotta stop. It's past the point where I'm being um, coherent, but I, I can't believe there's like, what, 80 people here, almost 80 people 79 here. participants, Howie, 79. I just love you all, and I'm so glad that the council gave me this opportunity. Thank you. That's more people than there were trombones. There were only 76 trombones, and you've got 79 participants, Howie. Thank you, John. 79 people who love you the way David Hoffman described. Uh, I think Thank that, you. That's exactly true, John. It was um, sort of a no-brainer to put this program together. And I really appreciate the letter that you wrote. And, um, and if I could just kind of pick up on, on that, Howie. Uh, the, one of the debates I constantly have with attorneys, other attorneys, is I get this comment all the time that, well, the people that come into my office want to go to court, or you must just get different people in your office. And the cases that you and I had together, Howie, oh similar God. to the cases that David was describing, are the type of cases that people would say, these people have to go to court. They, it Those just was gotta be that hard. And yeah. they didn't have to. You were one of the people who said to them, you don't have to, here are the options. And not everybody gives people those options. And it, the harder cases that we get done outside of court are a testament to the professional's willingness to say to people, you can do it. And, and to bring the type, that type of optimism um, to people's lives at a time when they don't know how to be optimistic is a, is a gift. I appreciated so much being on those cases with you and seeing your words in that blog about um, why you did it. You know, it, it, it's a conversation I wanted to continue today it, and invite other people to, to chime in on. Um, I know uh, if in a second I can hand it off, Vicki Sheeman had emailed me that she wanted to say a few things um, along this topic and to you, Howie. And um, this community of mediators, um, I remember meeting up with you at an IACP program um, and seeing you at APFM and, and you've introduced me to so many other people. Um, it's what makes it easy to do hard work. Um, and uh, I really wanted to thank you for putting that, that thought out there that we can have you know, on our website, encouraging other people to do this hard work um, and the, the advantage and letting people know the advantage that you get out of it, of not just the satisfaction of working with the clients, but being a part of a community like this that is so um, loving, which is a great word that David used and I'll, and I'll sort of leave my thoughts there. Um, Vicki, did you want to, is this a good time to turn it over to you for a minute? You're muted, but So anybody who knows me well knows I really hate public speaking, but I have such feeling for you, Howie, that I really wanted to try to pull this together. And if you 
you're going to think I plagiarized this and wrote it in the moment because you'll hear so many words resonate, but I, and to God, <laughs> I wrote it last night. And Howie, it's a love letter to you and a love letter to mediation. Leap of faith. When we chose what college to attend, it was a leap of faith. When we chose a life partner, it was a leap of faith. When we decided to have children, it was a leap of faith. None of us could have foreseen how it would work out along the way or in the end, yet we took a leap of faith. In 1995, I took a leap of faith by vowing I would never step into a courtroom on a contested matter ever again. I could only have taken that leap of faith because of the example of the icons of our amazing mediation community. Howie, contemporaneously with the time I took my leap of professional faith, I got to know you up close and personal from all of those years of divorce center board meetings, which were held in your office. Among a disparate and cacophonous group of individuals, you were the welcome voice of reason. You were the consensus builder, truly a peacemaker. And I'll never forget the good old days when the MCFM Institute convened in the basement of the Wellesley Community Center. One year, you were asked to be on a panel of experienced mediators who vulnerably and graciously shared the personal, actual mediation mistakes they made and lessons to be learned from that to help the rest of us fledglings become better peacemakers. After the years spent witnessing too many family law litigators tearing families further asunder, what a welcome relief it was to see you work your magic as a peacemaker with your soft touch, gentle but powerful nudge and open heart. Although you were not there with a safety net when I took my professional leap of faith, you were always there as a peacemaking trailblazer who lit the way for me and for countless others. Adored from afar, you've been my inspiration as you role modeled the essence of being not only a consummate mediator, but also a generous professional who has always paid it forward in countless ways. Howie, I will be forever indebted to you. Well, just for being you. Thank you so much, Vicki. Thank you, Vicki. Um, the next person I'm gonna ask to speak uh, briefly is Kim Whalen, who is one of our board members, is one of the people who um, enthusiastically added her vote to the unanimous vote to, to give Howie this award, um, and who has committed herself to full-time mediation as well, um, uh, as many of the people on this, on this uh, call here. And um, Kim, are you able to unmute yourself and, and join yeah. us? Yes. Um, although these are all very tough acts to follow and I used up all my clean tissues. Um, I did a long list of why I've chosen to make mediation my profession. And I don't want to make this about me. I want to keep it short so that other people can speak. But I think the two things that stick out to me, it was inspiring to read your letter, Howie. It was inspiring to think about why I do this work. So much of what I wrote down echoes what you've just said to us, so I don't want to repeat it, but I think one is this work challenges my head and my heart. I love the way you talk about, I do feel like I'm of service, like I'm helping people get through one of the worst things they may do in their lives. So that's wonderful, but I think what I realized, and it's been particularly apparent to me through pandemic that this is my tribe. I mean, I'm, I'm as old as most of you, but I'm relatively new to this profession. But I just, once I started, I knew I'd found my tribe. And Howie, you're one of the classic examples. I think I got to know you at Woody and David's peacemaking program, and then deepened that friendship when we took the IFS and mediation training. And even though I was a relative newbie, you were so generous with your time. And I also think if people haven't mentioned it, you were just kick-ass and fun to be around. Um, we did our little IFS luncheons at your office and I just look forward to that because 
like Vicky said, you were willing to make yourself vulnerable. You were so generous in sharing your expertise and you're just wicked fun. So um, I've written a lot more, but I want to leave time for other people to talk, but I'm, I'm grateful for this opportunity to honor you. And it's deepened my own thinking about what a, I love your phrase. This is a beloved community and I'm thrilled to be here as part of this. So thank you. Thanks so much, Kim. No one's ever called me wicked fun. I love that. <laughs> um, so there was uh, one more board member who was gonna speak briefly and then I'm gonna uh, see if David's got his wordle ready and also open it up um, for discussion. Um, Jen, are you available to come on? Um, <clears throat> hi, Jen Hawthorne, and I um, did working with Howie very often. I met him a few times at lunches, but I unfortunately came into this practice towards the end expressing much. But I have learned so last couple of weeks as we're talking about it and I it's where um Howie and I went to court together and he was not feeling well but he impacted the clients or me and kind and any time that I met him he always had a smile on his face regardless of what was going on Tim had asked Kim and I to speak about why we chose mediation as our career and I cannot say it any better than anyone else has already today because all of the reasons that have been mentioned are so true. It, it does lead to, right? We all know this as a profession is not as lucrative as, as litigation. Sitting here listening today, what I really am hoping for in my life is that at the end of my career, when I'm sitting around with my friends and colleagues, have a shared experience that Howie and David and John were expressing, of just being able to work with the people they truly loved their whole lives. And I think that's an amazing thing about our community. And so I suggested to Justin that we save the rest of what we were gonna talk about for this program for another time. And I'd like to open it up to anybody who wants to share how they um, memory, Howie, anything, anything. And if, it, if we wanna, if I can help not have people talk at the same time, you can feel free to either unmute yourself and try to chime in or raise your hand and then I can call on people too. Um, if you know how to, there's a way to raise your, phys uh, physically, I can try to spot you. There's also a way under reactions to choose raise hand within the Zoom. There's, oh, Jean, I see Jean with a physical raised hand. Hi, Howie. Hi, everybody. Hi, Howie. Hi, Jean. You. <laughs> Uh, real quick, I just wanted to say, um, when I was six years old, I really wanted to be a nun uh, because I had a lot of sort of got to do service on the planet in my bones. Um, unfortunately, my parents, or maybe fortunately, my parents told me I wasn't Catholic, so I couldn't be a nun. Um, so I decided instead I wanted to be a crossing guard and, um, you know, sort of safe passage, come this way, stop, no danger, danger. And, and Howie, I just wanna share that uh, I have loved our journey together in being crossing guards, being bold with stop, danger, danger, and bold with come this way, um, and sort of dancing in the middle of intersections. So um, I have loved every minute that I've had a chance to work with you on cases, Howie. And uh, this is just such an honor to be able to honor you. So love you. Thanks so much, Jean. Gene and Justin and I had a really tough case that we got across the goal line. And it, it was at a time when I wasn't very well and we somehow managed to get through it anyway. So thank you all. Just want to quickly um, say that when I walked into mediation training in March of 1993, and I met John Fisk and his team, I walked out at the end of the first day saying, this is why I went to law school. I knew there was a reason. And what I wanna say here is that, <clears throat> excuse me, 
that the reason is people like the people on the screen today and our honoree could not be more of a mensch, more generous, a more kind and loving human being. And I will say that I made a note a moment ago that I regret that I never got to Wednesday morning learning Talmud together at your office, Howie. But I know that among the many things that you also are, is a Talmud Hachem, someone who learns and studies and benefits not only for himself from the learning, but benefits the world. And it's been an honor always to be in your presence and delightful to be together with everyone here today. Thanks so much, Marsha. John, you uh, usually say what the quote is on the uh, on the award. I don't know if you wanted to share that. Or I can also share the screen so people can see it. You want me to say it, Justin? Yeah. For, first, they ignore you. Then they laugh at you. Then they fight you then you win. That's Gandhi. Justin, I can only find the thumbs up on reaction. So that's there you go. <laughs> like I said. So um, yeah. I just want to say a couple of things. First of all, hello to everybody. I haven't seen in quite a while. Um, but uh, Howie and I have had um, we know each other for a very long time. Um, and only in, re in sort of recent years and some discussions we've had, we learned that we grew up uh, a couple of miles from each other. Um, and there's a lot in our background that's in common, but I wanna say something about uh, legacy, which is that during my years as a mediator, um, one of our uh, frequent flyers was David. And David came in by himself and David came in with Howie in different cases. And you could see in David and the way he handled himself, David Bilodeau, the way he handled himself, that he had been under Howie's wing. And the two of them worked well together. There was, there was a synergy there that was, that was obvious and apparent. There are certainly different people, um, but there was a common strain one between the two of them. And David carrying on the legacy of Howie's firm is, uh, is momentous. Um, and Howie, thank you for um, being kind to me and, and kind to Shuto and kind to um, all of us over the course of a very, very long time. And um, I'll talk to you again soon privately. Thanks, Bill. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. David, is the hey. Wordle ready? Did you want to share that? Uh, yes, the Wordle is ready. So, Howie, I will send you a copy of this uh, so you'll have a chance to enjoy the various uh, qualities that you have uh, demonstrated uh, to uh, all of us. And um, I think that uh, wow. what people have submitted uh, does a very good job of capturing who you are and all the wonderful, loving energy you've brought into the world. If, if you don't know how these programs work, it makes the words that people repeated multiple times bigger. Nice. So thank you all. Um, we got, we're just at the point where we committed to end. So I think we should end unless anyone's got a burning desire to say something. Um, this is just marvelous, and uh, you know, I. Um, some of you know the doctors thought I wouldn't make it past the end of March, and I'm still here. So, I'll say that I'll remember this the rest of my life, and I hope that's a long time. So, thank you all so much. We all we all do. Yeah, we love you, Howie. Thank you, Howie. We, we love well. you. Mwah. We love you, Howie. Love you, Howie. Howie. Wow. Howie. 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 Howie.
Love you, Howie. I miss you. Yeah. Whoa. Love you, Howie. Awesome. Oh, oh my God. People I went to college with, people I went to law school with. <laughs> Has anybody said hi to my uh, good friend Jim Fiorentini, the mayor of Haverhill, uh, law school buddy? Uh, it's, this is incredible. Uh, I'm, I'm so, you know, so moved by it. And so well deserved. Yeah. yeah. We're happy Howie, to hear it. The, Howie, the only person we couldn't get was Billy Crystal. Yeah. And, and, well, one of the big regrets in my life was not being a better friend of his in high school. We <laughs> Billy Crystal and I went to the same high school. And we actually, one little known bit of trivia, we actually shared a playbill. Uh, both of us were in the senior play. He was the star. I wasn't. But we were, <laughs> we were both on the same playbill. So. <laughs> well, I'm sure he treasures it. <laughs> yeah. He sort of ignored me at our last reunion, but I won't hold that against him. He's <laughs> really, a mistake. He really is as nice and as funny as he seems professionally okay. in person. So I like Karen Levitt's comment in the chat. You are the star today, Howie. <laughs> I'll, I'll take You're that. here. This has been great. I love you all. Love you, Howie. We love, love you, Howie. Howie. Love you. Howie.